guys, this is the owner of Dream 11. I know a lot of you play. When I spoke with them, I said that we were going to get you. It was, as, uh, uh, you know, you could see on their faces, it was unbelievable uh, that, you know, Harsh is going to come in into this, uh, into this office. I'm going to talk about it. Just before you were coming in, uh, you know, over lunchtime, they were saying is that, you know, he's such a cult uh, that between 7 to 7.30 in the office, there's nothing that happens other than Dream 11 in the Anorak office. And I was like, really? But that's... Uh, uh, that's how much you are popular. I'm going to kickstart uh, Harsh with some sort of seven, seven, eight questions. Uh, but I do know that uh, a lot of people here are wanting to ask you, uh, you know, questions. So we've got about half an hour, 40 minutes of uh, Harsh's time. Uh, can you offer your tea, coffee, water? So first, uh, Harsh, uh, how did the idea of Dream 11 come along? First of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, uh, Anuj and everyone else was kind enough to help us move to one day case. <laughs> With the condition that Chabi we buy you, please answer me. We're here, making sure. And uh, I think it's great, um, you know, moving here. I think the building is fantastic. I think it is great. It's great to be here with you guys. The idea of Dream 11, so, you know, 2001, I'm a Bombay boy, born and brought up. Uh, I went to UK for my high school and uh, 11th club. And there I was always a Manchester United fan. Any, any fans here? Alright. So, still many fans here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been a Manu fan since you know that 97th season. The 19th season, we won the treble. And um, when I went to UK, I came upon this like fantasy football. So, fantasy Premier League for anyone who knows. So, FPL is, you know, the love of my life and my wife knows that. It's okay. So, you know, FPL was something that I was hooked on to. I got all my friends hooked on to it. And we continued playing for, for six, seven years. When I came back to Bombay after my engineering degree, uh, IPL was started. And so, at that time we said that, you know, we love FPL so much, so I really wanted to play fantasy cricket. So I said, Chalo, go super selected. And everyone was super selected back in the day. So we said, Chalo, super selected. Khelte. And you know, we opened it and we were like, it's shut. Band ho gaya. Like it, it actually launched in 2001 approximately. In 2003, 4 they shut down. So perfect example of right product, wrong time. So timing plays a large luck factor also into entrepreneurship. So, researchers and we will make use of engineering degrees and build it. And that's how we started with Dream 11. Uh, I went to all the gurus <coughs> saying that, you know, we have to do fantasy, season long, free to play, ad driven format. And all of them told me what a terrible idea it was. And I said, many, you know, Karnay, so me and my friend, Bhavit Sheikh, my friend, joined me. And we started off. And for the first three years, it took us time to learn that they were right. It was a terrible idea. Uh, so again, right product, not wrong business model. And then you know, three years, burned all our money, started a digital agency, got earned some money while keeping the dream alive. And then five years after we launched, we started what you see today. And 2012 onwards, we really started scaling that. So 2012, uh, when did you start Dream 11? 2008. So it took four years and then the fifth year we launched what you see today. And so Harsh, during those four years, what was going in your mind? Did you think that this was going to become this big? Uh, so as an entrepreneur, when you're starting, you feel like, you know, Puri India, Kelly Ji, you know. But uh, when you, you know, I think Steve Blank, there's a very uh, good tech mentor in the US, his name is Steve Blank. I think one of his quotes is that no business plan survives first contact with the customer. Right? So you can think that your product is amazing, and your friends and family will say, yeah, amazing, and all that. You launch it, and even they won't play. Even they don't use it. <laughs> so the truth, the proof is in the pudding, right? Finally, it's like you launch it. 
usually entrepreneurs make a few you know standard mistakes one is don't share your idea with anyone they'll steal it before before you right can anyone here think of you know we have 100 unicorns in india right now right can you name me one innovative idea which is not done anywhere else? Interesting. One, just one I'm asking for one out of the hundred unicorns, new idea. Hey, you get my point, right? It's not about ideas, it's about execution. That's all that matters. So it's about adapting, right? It's McDonald's can launch here, but they would have done terribly, they did terribly. Until they came up with a Mikhail Tiki and the like Indianized version. So it's about execution for us, and uh, that's how we've just grown. The big learning for us as well, guys, that it is not about the innovative idea, it is about execution. And it is such a such a valid point. You know, 100 unicorn, not one innovative idea. Not one innovative idea, but it is hard work and it is about execution. I think Elon Musk has said this as well this morning is that guys get prepared there is going to be a huge amount of hard work. Now he can be very innovative and say no 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 it is about innovation. He's also said this it is about execution. My second point is uh, Harshit that what turned things around for you? Um, well back in the day honestly first it was stubbornness to not give up. So if you're starting something you have to be the last person on the planet to leave it. You don't start something unless you're so passionate about it that you know nobody can kind of you have to go through everything wrong, everything has to happen wrong for you to leave it. Because if you are not the last person to believe in it, you know you can't convince your team, your investors, anyone else that this is worth the opportunity cost of your time to do. And so earlier it was more of stubbornness and passion. Passion continues. But uh, I think a lot of family support is very important. If you go back home to a family or to a wife or to parents or to anyone, who tell you like, kya karai, kya karai? you know, no idea is going to take off. Right? It, it takes a decade to build an overnight success. But all tech companies mostly are called overnight successes because you know, family, you know whether it be book my show, you know, Zomato, Paytm, Ola, Dream, anyone. They all take you 10 years to actually build out. So I think that grit and perseverance is the main and hard work. Like, like you said, there's no replacement for hard work. Nothing else. No amount of like A plus talent, you know, you'll be like, oh no, I am, you know, I don't need to clock in the hours because I can do it five hours or others can do it ten hours. No, so so <laughs> Then do no like work for eight hours, do what someone will do in 16 hours, we'll grow faster. But um, I don't. I think that's all rubbish. Two learnings out of this are great. This thing is that uh, hard work is the only way. Unless you're wanting to sell drugs, uh, <laughs> it doesn't uh, pay. Uh, but it is the only way to success. And beautifully, what Harsh said is that uh, you know we think of oh, war a great overnight success. He said it takes a decade to become an overnight success takes a decade to become an overnight success. You know, we're looking at it from outside. And we're looking at Harsh and we say, wow, Dream 11, what an overnight success. He's saying that it has taken me a decade to become an overnight uh, success. How do you attract quality talent? How do you retain them? How do you attract this? Mumbai is like, first of all, impossible to get like lots of engineers, right? If you want to attract hundreds of engineers, they are trying to work on pushing Mumbai up as more of a tech hub, but it's very difficult. But what Mumbai has, you have to press on its advantages, right? Mumbai has very high talent retention. So in Bangalore, for example, you have an average of 25-30% attrition every year. So you know, every three years, no, like on average, no one is there who was there three years back. And so in Mumbai, I think, You'll get fewer people in terms of engineering talent, but they'll stay. And we really focus on the fact that after you work for two years, your third and fourth year especially is where you're really valuable. Really like, good happen. Like you're fully aligned with the culture of the company, you understand the problems, you can lead the solutions, you can do all of that. So 
yes, it's very tough to uh, join a tech startup in Mumbai, but I think it's getting easier and easier. So talent is talent is now recognizing, and you know, we ourselves started putting together the top unicorns and silicons in Mumbai. I don't know if anyone's seen it. If I link to put a post on this, you can check it out because I put up a screenshot and image of all the tech unicorns and silicons in Mumbai. And within 50 of us in, in Mumbai, in Mumbai, not even today. So in Mumbai, we have about 23, I think, unicorns. Headquarters, huh? Out, out of the hundred. Yeah, yeah, out of hundred. In 22, I didn't know that. I thought it was all Bangalore based. Yeah, we didn't know that. Then we started putting it together. We were shocked. See, one thing that it sounds a little weird, but I'm sure some people here will get it. Uh, engineers used to come to us and say that you know we don't mind joining Rio Eleven. Moving from Bangalore, Delhi, wherever, right? But uske baad kahan pe jayenge? Because uh, there aren't any other companies. Haan, so you have to realize that they're not going to stay with you for long. Uh-huh. That's okay. Four years come karenge, and then they can move on to something else. So they're like, why should I come to Bombay, settle down, work for four years, then go back to Bangalore? So we all need to improve the tech ecosystem here for talent liquidity in that sense to grow. How do you handle pressure? Um, usually by shouting. <laughs> but it, no, um, you know, honestly, I think pressure is handled in many different ways by different people. Uh, for me, one of the largest stress masters is, you know, watching sports, obviously. Um, with my family, obviously, back at home, I have two boys, young, young boys right now. And um, I love dogs. I have four dogs. Oh my Some God. of those are stress busters. What's your advice to some of the young entrepreneurs, young people, young leaders uh, who are sitting in there? Um, I think just focus a lot on culture and oversized focus on defining culture. No culture is right. You know, Amazon culture, Google culture, Meta culture. Your culture, our culture, Reliance culture are completely different. So don't try to copy someone's culture. You can, like our culture is very influenced by Netflix culture tech. If you haven't read it and you're interested in culture, um, some of the smartest people in Silicon Valley said that the Netflix culture deck is one of the most important documents to ever come out of Silicon Valley, of everything. And I couldn't agree more because it wasn't about their culture, it was how simply they defined it, how simply they spoke about it and how they integrated it into everything they do. So culture is not culture if you write it in a handbook or put it on a wall and then, you know, forget about it, Pat Salva Dekhi It has to be integrated into your everyday workings, into your hiring, into your appraisals, into your peer feedback, into your firing, in everything. Uh, you've been very humble throughout I have seen and uh, you, you come from a very accomplished family you yourself are very accomplished how do you handle success and wealth I mean you, you your roots are still so grounded I mean in terms of wealth uh, I mean wealth is like phenomenal and many times you know you encounter people uh, you know who have been successful and have have earned the wealth that their demeanor changes and I've seen you and your family as well it has remained very grounded what is it what is it that sort of works on that I think a lot of to do with upbringing really um, you know my, my dad started from scratch and uh, moved to Mumbai and the whole value for value of value for money and appreciation for what you have in life and I think that this upbringing has to be ingrained. You can't just get it overnight, and hopefully, we can pass it to our kids. Um, but, but you know, like, why are you working? Right? That also has to be clear. If you're, there's nothing wrong with it. If you're working to earn huge amounts of money, and that's what you want to do, there's no problem if you want to be Richard Branson and buy, you know, islands and things like that. If you're working to solve, like. I'm usually working more towards solving a problem and uh, solving user problems, solving a problem, that's what gets me going every day. So 
No, no, this is a fantastic part. I think is what will be interesting is that how do you then pass it on to the next generation? Uh, that will be that will be interesting. Uh, last two questions and then I'll open it up for uh, Q and A. Um, is there an advice that you can give to teens here? No, I think I honestly think I was um, very happily surprised that you guys are pushing forward on tech, product, platforms and you are evolving with the times. Uh, most other people in your industry are not. And you know, some are in denial, some are confused how to do it. It's amazing that you just keep pushing, keep pushing on that side because you know, Web 3 is now being spoken about. Most people haven't even gone to Web 2 and they are going to be dinosaurs going forward, right? So I think the only thing I would say is that if you're starting something, if you have a base, uh, that's something that we've also learned with all our startups under Dream Sports today, right? We have 10 companies now, not just Dream 11. And we went through a mistake of when, they, when companies are starting up, we make them, we said that, look, we have a culture, we have an HR book, we have a system and process and use this, it will help you scale up because as you scale up, everything keeps breaking. But if you use our things that we learned over time, then it will work even when you grow. But actually stop them from growing. Because when you're a startup, when you're starting something new, you need to do stuff that doesn't scale. You can't be, you can't have that even little bit of red tape, otherwise it'll stop your growth. And it's okay to break. All your systems will break, you'll make mistakes, you know, it won't scale up and that's okay. And I think that's the one big lesson that if you're trying new things, don't try to you know, put too much, it's like, it's like sending your kids, right? You can let them run and fall, you can't like put a seatbelt on them the whole, the whole life and say, hey, you know, I'll scroll you around, don't run. But you also can't let them run on the road. So I think, allowing new things to run on their own, let them go to the playground. You can put some rules and guardrails, but let them play, let them grow on their own. That's, I think, one of the biggest things I, I would say for your newer initiatives. My final question, Harsh, uh, was there any time through this Dream 11 journey that you think is that, oh, this is not going to happen, this is not going to be a success, I'm not going to be able to go through this? All the time, I think uh, it's a oh, sorry, it's an entrepreneur's journey that it's always highs and lows and highs and there's no like a steady state, right? There's never a steady state. And so I think uh, like when we, when, we, when we had two years, we were looking for fundraising. We were doing fundraising. And I pitched to literally every VC in India, then every VC in America, then some VCs in London, etc. Everyone said no. So, in two, three years, we had like a... How many people could you have met? Hundreds, I think we had about 150, like Bhavit and I counted once, we had about 150 knows that he could count, more than that would have been... No, there. no, 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 yeah, no. Like a unique knows, not from the same, we had, <laughs> we had multiple knows from the same form also. But, uh, you know, for each one there was also a learning of why the same knows, so we could improve it. But that's all good to say today. That time it was depressing, yeah. Like uh, every meeting you go, you're like, yes, 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 and then you're like, so will you invest? No. <laughs> then this is why. So it's very depressing that time. And it did get to a point where you keep questioning that all is subloke in nature because no one wants to invest. So is is it just working now and will it stop working? And you question yourself all the time. And I think at that time it is the stubbornness. Yes, and, the, and the support, I think. And the support. The, the passion. Yeah. Stubbornness comes from the passion and then the support that you get. Without that, I don't think uh, without family or family, friends, support and the passion, without that, you won't be able to survive. Wow. What, what, what an interesting uh, sort of five or six things that uh, we took up. I'm going to try and summarize a little later, but I'll just open it up, uh, open the floor uh, for any questions uh, that are there.
Congratulations. You said there are 10 different companies under Dreamville. I'm assuming there's one big next dream. What is it? Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think each one is different, right? Like, for example, we have Dream Set Go, right? Which helps you, which is close to my heart because I love going for sports matches. They help you to travel, like whether you want to go to the Olympics or F1 or football or cricket, you want to go to Australia for the T20 World Cup. They'll organize the whole trip, make it an experience for you. But at the same time, commercially, that's not going to like be a $10 billion company if it works in like three, four years, right? But it doesn't have to be. So not everything has to work only according to a PL, right? Some of products and problems you're solving which add immensely to the value that you add to a customer. There's another thing called Radio, which we invested a hundred million dollars into right now, which is Web3 you know, Web3 cricket essentially. So they're focusing on non-fungible tokens. I know many of you all have read about Web3 and crypto and you know Web3 and blockchain are very different from crypto. Crypto is one part of it. But the use case of non-fungible tokens like in asset classes with even with real estate, right? To be able to rule out this whole ROC going to that office and like that whole thing can become so much easier if you have a property which is a non-fungible token and a commercial value actually ascribed to it saying that I don't know what the percentage of it, no matter who sells it. Right? These are things that you can't do in today's world. And using that in sports, like if that is one of the examples where it will be a one zero, it will be a binary result. Either it will be a multi-billion dollar result or it will be zero. Right. So we try to hedge our bets, if you may, across the 10 portfolio companies to have some which are, you know, lesser growth, lesser risk, some which are high growth high risk. Thank you so much. Hi Harsh, uh, can you name any one thing that my 11th circle has and you don't have? Dada. <laughs> Dada ka bada. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. No, they also have features like to answer like they also have a feature which is a 12th man feature if any of you have played there. Which is interesting, we've tried it out but with little success so you can, I won't go into the details of it. But I think all our competitors do something differently. Because honestly, if you're going against the incumbent, if you're doing the same thing the incumbent is doing, you'll get crushed anyway. So everyone has something different. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi there. Uh, can you have to prove that you can answer the other one and reply? New York. Uh, uh, personally, like I, I was at Columbia for my business school. I was at uh, University of Pennsylvania for my engineering. So I've always been in and around New York, I would, as a single or married without kids, I would choose New York. With kids, I would choose maybe, you know, Palo Alto, San Francisco side. Are you talking personal or professional? Personal. I think Jeta and the team at the back, you know, the guys who played Dream 11 sitting in there. Uh, if you have a process to withdrawals, please don't ask me. Hi, <laughs> Harsh. Good afternoon. That was a very simple question. Hi, who was there? Uh, did you think that India would go to the semi-finals? Did I think that? Yeah. I hope not. I was very, very hopeful like everyone else for India Park Finals. I was fully convinced that this is all been like, it's all in the stars, everything. But, uh, you know, honestly, I would rather, it sounds weird, I would rather lose, India lose really badly than to lose on the last one. <laughs> you know, that's a heartbreak. At least, th this was a disappointment. What happened with India Pakistan is like a heartbreak. For, obviously, Pakistan. <laughs> Hello, Marsh. Hi. All the mistakes that you've made and uh, overcame all the obstacles in your life, uh, what would be that one advice that you would give your younger self? Yeah, uh, good question. So, I like I said, I think 
you make so many mistakes and you continue making mistakes every day. I think that's one very important other learning for us as a company, as part of our culture, is that you know we we learn to run, we learn to like as kids, we learn to walk and run by falling. We learn to swim by like almost drowning. Right? And, uh, so that is why I told like if you know my parents have told me, if you want to learn to swim, just push them into the water. See, check it. And you know, like our kids today are all like. Classes, three months of classes, floaties, and everything. So I think the whole culture somehow in the Indian system now when you go to school, failure becomes a bad word. If you fail at a subject or if you fail in a class, you fail to matlab it's a malaik hai and you know. I think that's something we have to relearn when we grow. So I would just tell my younger self that it's completely okay to fail as long as you're giving your 200% effort, and as long as you keep learning from failures, as long as you keep learning from every failure and not repeating stupid mistakes, that's all that matters. It, we don't have to be successful in every single thing and every time we do it. Hi, I'm David Desai. Here. Yeah, it's you. Uh, so first, I've been following Devan like since 2013, man. Oh, cool. There was no app. So you guys used to run it over Chrome, yeah, right? Yeah. From that time, I just wanted to understand the one thing that uh, you had to face a lot of legal issues yeah. because this is consideration. What do you say? Yeah. Playing cards, yeah. with the tax on at thirty-eight percent, which is there. Yes. Being it legal, then sponsoring India for the promotions and everything. How was the journey like? Did you think about it? It's going to be that big promoting. Being at the other side, which people would not appreciate, people playing Dream Eleven, yes. and then putting it to a simple penny, like play with twenty-five rupees, win two crores, that changed the mind. So, how was the journey? Like, did you thought about it? It's going to be that big? So, no. So, I think that we don't think about like I don't think we have the vision or ability to say that this is exactly how it will happen. The only way we find success is by tweaking something. Every day, hundred things need to be tweaked, right? So you can start by saying we're going to have large contests with small entry fees. Then we'll try bigger entry fees, smaller contest, medium, medium, and you keep tweaking it every day. And you will be started with a season-long model where you have to manage one team for one year. Then you got we got it down to a tour. So one India Australia tour, for example. Then we got it down to a day. Multiple matches. Then we got it down to per match. What you see today is per match. So we went from a free model to a freemium model. So I think yes, there were so many regulatory hurdles also to answer your other question. But one thing we also have to realize is our regulatory hurdles, as long as you are legally protected, are a competitive advantage. Because Desis can deal with this stuff, right? Ki ek din bolay ki nahi nahi karna, ek din bolay ha ha ha, ho jayega. Then dusre din baap se bolay nahi 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 kaise the? You know, obviously the foreign MNCs or large companies they can't deal with like ye ha na ha na ha na. They need clarity, five year plan, ten year goals and all of that. We are like boss. You know, every every week things keep changing. It's a it's an advantage for us as Desis. Our ability to do jugard, our ability to drive on the streets, like you know, in Pahar se aane, yahan se aane, you will just be like, "Ah, theek hai, yaar." You know, that's why in some yesterday I was driving on the Western Express Highway. Some dude is running in the middle, in the dark, and he's not even running. He's just like, you know, "Tum log jaoge." So either you can be like. Uh, Listen, my right of way. I will drive. If you get hit, sorry. Or you can be like this guy is an idiot. I'll move, but I'll carry on with life. So I think regulatory challenges are like that. And I think as Indian companies, we have a competitive advantage to carry on with life despite the obstacles. That's the culture that we've been brought up with. So that's what we focus on. We can take one last question. Take last yeah. two. Good. Speak a little louder, Ashish. We'll hear you. Or you can speak in the mic. It's on. Uh, Harsh Ashish here. Uh, 
my question to you, uh, we all associate uh, Ray Miller with IPL. So, what was the feeling that we're going around in your mind when you got the Daniel Swan trip on IPL? Oh, nice. Yeah, it was, um, it was amazing to see Dream 11. IPL is honestly a dream for any brand or anyone to be able to A, afford it, to B, to actually win it and have it there. It was just amazing. So, I think. Um, it was one of those things that you kind of remember from the whole journey. There are these three, four, like a series A, the first time we get funded, a dream will have an IP, and these are the kind of things I think um, are the ones that stand out and we remember. Hi, Harsh, happy to So, I, I'm sure uh, you would know at Amrock, me as an individual, I'm selling homes and I've seen a lot of ads of Team 11. So I had one question, is there any possibility that you uh, have a home for Team 11 for Team 11? I would be terrible at selling homes. I would be like, if you have a problem with your list, I'll just tell you, you know, these are all the solutions and then you decide what you want, call me when you decide it. We ran a servicing business for a couple of years. And I was terrible at it. I can't deal with like, I'm an engineer, I try to fix problems, right? I can't do what you guys do is amazing to have that, you know, persistence. Yeah. And I've seen the persistence first time in getting us to run VKC. Yeah. You know, we were this close. We had actually filled, uh, like, all the paperwork was done to move to Goldridge, next door. And uh, Anurita, the whole team has made sure that we scrapped it and moved here. So the persistence you guys have, keep that as your culture. Hi, uh, I have a very simple and fun question. Uh, do you play yourself? <laughs> yeah, um, so we are not, no one at Dream Club is allowed to play with users outside. Because, you know, that's. When they come and say, Ki toh wo jeti hai, toh mera team change kar liye. We can't do that. But what we do is we have an internal contest. So our system doesn't allow. So if I try to join a public contest, they'll tell me you're, you're an employee, you can't join. But we obviously have an internal contest. But one open secret, I still don't play fantasy football on Dream Day. <laughs> because, and that goes to talking about fantasy sports. It's extremely high on network effects, which means that when you have your friends, it's like Facebook or Facebook, Insta, WhatsApp, when you have you and your friends in a certain network, it's extremely hard to pull you out. Because unless your friends are already on the next network, you have very little incentive to be there. But until anyone pulls one person out, how will you even build a network? So these are very large competitive advantages in some businesses like us. Hi Harsh, uh, I'm Saman. Quick question, IQ versus EQ? I have been told by my wife I have very low EQ. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me every day. But um, I think IQ and hard work gets you somewhere. EQ will keep you there. So I think I also need to work on EQ a lot. Because as you grow a company and have a lot more people, I think then EQ matters a lot more because there's so many diverse people, so many different problems, so many different aspirations. I think initially, I may be wrong, but if you go too much into EQ initially, you like, itne sare cheez, you know, you have so many things to do that I think honestly IQ and hard work is much more important initially. Do you have Big. a on Kabaddi? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see Kabaddi. Yeah, so it's very popular because the problem is Kabaddi only comes for like two months of the So you're not able to build a loyal user base which you're trying to actually push Disney and talk to them and say that how do we make the company? We actually help launch another Yuva Kabaddi. So we're trying to get Kabaddi to be larger. Big round of applause guys. <laughs> We've been doing this uh, every quarter for the last five years. You're the first non-realistic guy. Yeah. You are the first non-realistic guy. Thank you, Michael. And uh, you know, I think it is a great initiative to invite 
actually not realistic guys i learned six seven things from this you know first is really the passion and the stubbornness uh, you know that is a big big thing second it takes a decade for each one of us to become an overnight success third culture is extremely important fourth if you're not going to use technology you're going to become a dinosaur and there are a number of them who are not using technology i can tell you i absolutely echo what harsh is saying is that uh, they are going to become dinosaur fifth make mistakes celebrate failure but don't make the same mistake again and again learn from those mistakes and sixth guys india is still jiva <laughs> And it is true. We are not really black and white guys. We're still grey, and we have to recognize that we have to work in an environment which is slightly grey, and we have to navigate through that. That's why Indians are at a global world doing so well because they have learned how to traverse through grey. Thank you very much, Harsha. Thank you very much for coming and visiting from our side. Want to give uh, sort of flowers? We wanted to give life. No, no. So we we said we'll give you a contract. Thank you. Thank you.